and please be seated. Thank you. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Friends in Christ, we gather to grieve our loss and to comfort one another in our sorrow. We gather to give thanks for the life of Julian Mary Carver Hill and to surround these loved ones with our support, strength, and encouragement. On behalf of St. James United Church, Woodstock, and on behalf of myself, my wife, Olua Tui, our daughters, Adife, and Timilade, and my son, Adibayo, we extend our sympathy and condolence to the family of Jolene, friends, our children, grandchildren, and everyone here. May the Lord grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. I want to assure the family of our support this day and the days ahead. May you be comforted. Amen. Our first aim is morning as broken. Just please remain seated. We just had one of uh, Julian's favorite in morning has broken. Let us pray together. Let us say the prayers together. Let us pray. Dear God, Lord of all life, help us to accept death as part of life, trusting in your goodness and great love for every one of us. 
will feel now the pain of parting with a loved one, but will rejoice that so many were privileged to experience life with her. We entrust Julian to you in death, as in life you entrusted her to us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I would like to invite... Okay, we are already here. Prince. One night I dreamed a dream. I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes of my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. When the last scene of my life shot before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. There was only one set of footprints. I realized that this was at the lowest and saddest times of my life. This always bothered me, and I questioned the Lord about my dilemma. Lord, you told me when I decided to follow you, you would walk and talk with me all the way. But I'm aware that during the most troublesome times of my life, there is only one set of footprints. I just don't understand why, when I need you most, you leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Julian was part of the United Church Women, and uh, she, she was not only part, but she dedicated all her life to be part of that group. And the four ladies, her, few of our ladies at the United Church Women group. Thank you. Let me invite Debbie and Dave for the next reading. I was telling uh, that you ha you brought Debbie here this afternoon that you catch a big fish because this is a task season. Thank you, Debbie, for coming. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord.
please let me invite Kayla for the next song, Wubasu song. Thank you very much. I want to make reservation for you to sing on Easter Sunday, if that is possible for you at the church. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow, that was very, very wonderful. The next is the prayer of St. Francis by Dr. Jane Robert. Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you. 
would be happy about the sanitizing. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marissa. This is my brother, Brennan. We're Jolene and Peter's children. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the life of our mother, Jolene Caverhill. As we look around at all the loving faces of mom's dearest family and friends, we are so grateful that you are here with us to share a few stories, songs, and prayers that she would have loved and cherished. Jolene Mary Cliff was born in St. Stephen on January 20th, 1949, to George Alfred Cliff and Mary Pauline Scriver. Following baby Joey's birth, Mary needed to stay in the hospital for two or three months, so George looked after their newborn on his own. George was known to have said during that time that Jolene nearly kicked his nuts off <laughs> because she was an active sleeper, and they shared a small bed for the many months while Mary recovered. Not long after Mary returned home from hospital, George moved to Toronto with a few friends from the Maritimes to find work. Jolene's cousin Herb tells us a story that George arrived in Toronto's Union Station at 10 a.m., caught a taxi directly to the Massey Ferguson factory, and by 1 p.m. that same day, he was working on the assembly, assembly line, driving lug nuts onto tractor tires. George would eventually go on to work as a mechanic in Toronto, then start his own furnace repair company in the city. From George and Mary both, Jolene was raised with an emphasis on hard work, responsibility, and punctuality. She would invariably show up early for church, the movies, my games, or Marissa's recitals. In fact, she was often so early that she would arrive before the organizers or the venue even opened. She always wanted to sit in the very best seats and never wanted to miss a moment. Back to her childhood, Mary and Jolene joined George in Toronto in 1951 when Joey was about two years old. The three reunited family members boarded in a small apartment on Shaw Street with whom she called Gramps and Auntie May for a little while. The family moved on to a shared apartment at 308 Keel Street and then to their own small home at 392 Harvey Avenue. When mum was five years old in 1954, Mary gave birth to a son named Alan, but he only survived three days. The loss was devastating for the family, and Mum often wondered what it would have been like to have a little brother. <laughs> but as she grew up in the big city, extended family and friends always filled their small homes. In fact, it was an expectation that when family visited Toronto from New Brunswick, that they would stay with George and Mary's family. So little Joey almost always had company. Growing up in Toronto, Mum absolutely adored going to school. She loved her teachers, and she always spoke with fondness about her friends. She was surrounded by good food, laughter, fiddle music, and dancing. Along with ballet lessons, young Jolene learned to play accordion, while her mother accompanied her on guitar and her father George on the fiddle. They would go on to play, clog, waltz, square dance, and laugh together for many years. I think Mom also found great comfort and meaning in the fact that my school in Toronto, where I am a teacher, is just down the street from her old place on Keel and where I live with Olina and the cats in the city is just around the corner from Mum's old home on Harvey Avenue. Although Mum loved living in Toronto, her most fond memories from childhood were of returning to New Brunswick every summer to play with her beloved cousins. George and Mary were both the youngest of 11 children in the Cliff and Scriver families, so Mum had dozens of cousins to play with and learn from when she returned to the homesteads around Rossville, Temperance Vale, and Campbell Settlement. Mum's cousin Sandra recently told us that she couldn't wait for Joe to arrive and would cry when it was time for Mum to fly back to Toronto. Mum would tell us stories of jumping in piles of hay, and Sandra added that they spent summers caring for rabbits and baby chicks, riding in hay wagons, and catching frogs in brooks. Mum and her girl cousins remained very close over the years and gathered to catch up on each other's news, always had lots to talk about, talking and laughing so much that they could barely catch their breath. Jolene's cousin Herb's wife, Ruth, described meeting young Jolene in Toronto for the first time. She said Joey was really gifted, friendly, had a great sense of humor, and was a really sweet girl with dimples, as well as a very thoughtful young lady. In a letter of cherished friendship from 2007, Ruth goes on to say, you were there for us when Roy and Madeline died. It meant a lot to us. 
This is a common story about mom that has been reinforced by countless friends and family members. One of mom's many gifts was providing support to families who were suffering from grief surrounding illness and death. As a nurse, a daughter, and a mother who loved the elderly just as much as the young, this makes perfect sense. Looking back, we remember attending many funerals as children, but only recently are we fully realizing the quality of the care and support she provided to her extended family and friends, most often in times of their greatest need. Joey lived in Toronto until she was 15 in 1964 when Esso started offering free burner service and drove Grampy out of business. The Cliff family bought the place on the corner of Hi Highway 105 and the Campbell Settlement and opened a corner store, George and Mary's. There were many stories about the sharing of gossip and community news there. Carol, who worked at George and Mary's from 1964 to 67, remembers the liar's bench where local folks would sit and chat. We remember as children at Grammy and Grampy's, the talk around the dinner table was name after name after name. You remember so-and-so and so-and-so's -and -so nephew's wife's cousin's mother. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And we were like, who? But the corner store and the dinner table were used the same way we use Facebook today, to keep in touch, to know who's where and what's what. Mum's memories and recollections of people, relationships, and connections was formed in this era. Jolene excelled in high school back in New Brunswick and was a member of the last graduating class of SRHS, Southampton Regional High School. We remember her telling stories about playing on the volleyball and basketball teams, scoring 99% on her chemistry matriculation exams, and respecting, respecting and admiring all of her teachers, even young Mr. Day. Jolene was very proud of her grades, but more so of her friendships. She kept in touch with many of the members of her graduating class and as, and as always was a central part of organizing gatherings, communication, reunions. Talking to her classmates at the visitation at Pulelling's yesterday, many ladies shared stories about how they were thrilled to have someone so smart and pretty and kind move to town. They were a little jealous at first, this graceful city girl arriving in the country, but they soon realized what a wonderful friend she would become. Mom's interest in keeping in touch with friends was only matched by her ability and effectiveness in getting everyone together, as she has done again for us today. When she was in grade 11, Jolene went to the prom with Peter Caverhill, who she thought was tall, dark, and handsome. They started going together and would be partners for over 30 years. After high school, Peter went to UNB to study science, and Jolene trained at the VPH School of Nursing in Fredericton. Mom explained that she had considered university, but George couldn't afford to send her. However, the program at Victoria Public Hospital had nursing students work in exchange for tuition. So we can understand why Grampy would like that model. Jolene was so proud to be a part of the class of 1970 and would graduate as its valedictorian. Cheryl and the girls would often spend time in Mom's room, partly because it was a private room, but mostly because it was nice and neat and welcoming, and she would play the accordion for them. This warm, welcoming atmosphere is something that mom always created in her home wherever she lived. The girls remember that at formal dances, Jolene always wore a beautiful new dress made by her mother Mary or Jolene herself. Since the nursing students were assigned to placements alphabetically, small groups got to know each other pretty well. The girls who went to Montreal for three months, then to St. John for two, remained very close and kept in touch following their graduation. Jolene, Cheryl, Marion, and Irene lived together in Wilmot Apartments, where they worked in Fredericton for a year after they graduated. They remember Peter driving around uh, in a yellow VW Bug, which got a little bit rusty in places, so they called the car Freckles. They fondly remember their Freedom 55 trip to Cuba in 2004 and local excursions to PEI, among other reunions. Through this gathering, she has brought many of the girls together once again. Dad went to Halifax for dental school and Mum joined him there and found work as a nurse at the old Victoria General Hospital. They got married in 1973 and Judy and Wendell Flowelling stood up with them at their wedding along with Sandra Morgan and Frank Gadette, Bonnie Nogler and Dana Hansen, Marion Pearson and Bob Hume. Michael Flowelling was the ring bearer and Jennifer Hume was a flower girl. When Dad graduated, Peter and Jolene returned home to New Brunswick, bought the house at 156 Chapel Street here in Woodstock, and set up a dental practice just a stone's throw away. With this church, the post office, schools, the library, all within walking distance, this area had everything we needed as a young family. Mom and Dad were always here for us as parents, 
we remember having a blast at birthday parties with homemade cakes and treat bags, all our favorite friends and family. Mom took great joy making Christmas and holidays uh, very special occasions with thoughtful, intentional, and meaningful routines and celebrations. We had many great visits with Grampy and Grammy and Nana, Auntie Ann and Uncle Paul, cousins Bruce and Mike, and joyful parties at the Cliff uh, and Scriver family reunions. And it was all documented every moment. We have mountains of photos and home videos that will help keep her cherished memories alive. So if you ever have any questions about our family tree, or if you want to see photos from the 70s, 80s, 90s, or today, <laughs> the archive is at 121 Osprey Court. Mom loved to take pictures and trained us well to pause, look this way and smile, and she'd say, fuzzy pickles. Brennan eventually took on the role as family photographer, allowing Mum to be captured in photos more often. If I was in a recital or performance that had more than one showing, I always knew Mum and Dad would be at all of the showtimes, and often in the best seat in the house, towards the center, on the aisle for unobstructed camera shots, and part way up. I recall walking home from elementary school and later years, looking forward to an after-school snack and finding out what Mum was cooking for supper. I truly loved most everything she cooked, with the exception of baked beans. Hers were surely delicious, but I just didn't and still don't like them. Of course, they provided us with the basics of food, shelter, and care, but they also provided us with every opportunity the community had to offer. Trips into the wilderness with her parents, dance and music lessons, girl guides, boy scouts, choir, sports, gymnastics, and swimming. Looking back now, it was more than a full-time job just providing in that way for her family and keeping up with her kids. As a mother, Jolene was warm, caring, generous, and fun. She said that she felt the job as a mother was the most important thing she could do in her lifetime. In a letter we, re we received last week from her friend Kathy, she said, I don't know if you realized how big an influence you were in my life. Way back in the days, we went to La Leche League. You got me off to a good start mothering. Then all the way up through the schooling years, your strong and positive presence acted as an anchor for me. A lot of parenting skills came from me trying to mimic your calmness and humor. I'm sure mom received similar inspiration from other mothers in her community. And as always, would have done her best to share and support others with what she had learned. While supporting and encouraging her children in all their endeavors, she volunteered for many causes throughout the community, including health care and education. Her contributions range from supporting the Look Good Feel Better campaigns for individuals fighting cancer, to serving on home and school associations and school boards for many years, to more recently volunteering at Townsview School with the ELF program for reading with grade two students. Everyone who ever worked or volunteered with her commented on her work ethic, dedication, and sense of responsibility. When Marissa and I grew up, Jolene recertified as a registered nurse and worked for many years for VON, the Victoria Order of Nurses, in the community. She absolutely adored her clients, many of which were elderly veterans, for whom she would provide foot care, flu shots, nursing, and nurturing of all kinds. Many of her veterans described her as an angel, visiting their homes on a regular basis, keeping them company, helping them feel less alone. She was gifted at supporting the elderly, especially women, and those who care for the elderly in our community. When I became a mother to Jackson in 2019 and then to Bennett in 2013, she was overjoyed to take on her new role as grandmother. Although we had given her a few years practice with mine and Paul's dog, Maya. I remember mom telling me how wonderful it was to see me become a mother myself and the pride she felt watching me in the hospital with newborn Jackson and then Bennett swaddling them or changing their diapers uh, or learning to breastfeed. I don't recall her directly giving me advice or telling me what to do, but rather encouraging me to trust my instincts and do what I felt was best. As others have said, I tried my best to emulate how I saw and recalled her as a mother to Brennan and I, and knowing if I did that, I'd be okay. Mum, affectionately known as Grammy Jolene, absolutely adored Jackson and Bennett. I have special memories of her snuggling and rocking and holding my boys. She especially loved reading to them and often gave them special books as gifts. Caring for them when Paul and I had a commitment or took a brief evening break was never referred to as babysitting, but rather love sitting. 
As they grew bigger, she would have her two-seater red wagon ready to go for rides up and down Bicentennial Drive or around Osprey Court. Grow as they did, she then resorted to loading them into her big blue recycling bin after recycling day, of course, because otherwise her bin would have been full to the brim doing her part for the environment, and wheeling them around her driveway and street, resulting in many laughs and giggles from all three. I'm sure her neighbors likely wondered what she was doing parading her blue bin around like that if they weren't aware of the precious cargo inside. During these after-school pickups and visits would usually include dinner out. How lucky Mum was to be dining with two handsome young men on a regular basis, and she was always happy to pick up the check. As Brennan and I were writing about Mum, Jackson asked if he could contribute as well, and wrote the following on behalf of him and Bennett, which I have his permission to read. Grammy Jolene was always happy and fun. She made me and Bennett smile, she made us laugh, she had fun with me and Bennett after school before mom got off work, and she showed us and told us interesting things that she discovered. It was fun when she went on trips with me and Bennett and mom. We had gone to Fredericton one time and she came with us. One time we went to St. John and she came with us too. One time we went to Moncton and she came with us when we went to Toronto to visit Uncle Brennan. Whenever we would come over to her house for supper or something, she would always have something good for dessert like ice cream or her brownies that everyone would like. And sometimes, if she was taking us out to supper because Mom had something to do for work or something else, she would always treat us to something like McDonald's. Normally, she would let me choose every other time and then let Bennett choose every other time, so it was like a pattern. She would normally take us out on Thursdays when we didn't have hockey practice to mess up the schedule. She would always ask us if we learned anything new at school or if we did uh, or made anything at daycare on snow days or on summer vacation. She would always like to know if we did any field trips or started any new project in school. She was really into nature and animals, so she would have a bird feeder outside of her wi window in her living room. There was usually chickadees, and sometimes there would even be cardinals that came to the feeder. I thought I could put bird's food in my hand and stand there like a statue to see if birds would ever come and land on my hand. I haven't yet, but I'll keep trying until they do. St. James United Church was Jolene's spiritual home throughout her adult life. Her retirement years afforded her time to serve on committees, play in the handbell choir, and support the spiritual life of the community in any way she could. Mary and others remember her being a part of M&P, UCW, Session, and organizing ushers. She was always keen to help with yard sales, the Youth Development Fund, and other supportive ventures. Jolene was dependable, dedicated, and you could be darn well sure she'd get the job done and do it well. Mom was a Christian and a churchgoer, while she also acknowledged and respected and learned about all the ways of knowing religions and belief systems. She was interested in yoga, Reiki, karma, First Nations cultures, and the world at large. She was eternally on a search for purpose and meaning. On the window by her kitchen sink, there is a cutout from a bulletin which reads, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And she would always say, hope for the best, and pray for the rest. Each and every one of us has a different story and a different experience of Jolene Caverhill, but collectively, all of our memories together make up the entirety of who our mother was and how she will carry on in our memories, thoughts, and actions. Around town, many of you would see Jolene taking her friends out to coffee, joining them at the movies, often known for double headers on a Friday night, taking in both the early and the late show and her walks around the neighborhood. She adored her neighbors on Osprey Court, close and extended family, friends from high school, nursing school, her work and the community. Through her example and in her life, she did such a good job of showing us how to care for others. We can only hope to embody her example in our own lives and will carry her memory forward. So thank you to the countless friends and family members who supported and cared for mom through her life and more recently during her illness. Thanks to my partner Olina for dropping everything and in Toronto to help care for mom here in Woodstock and Marissa's partner Tom for the tasty suppers and for doing the dishes. To our father Peter for checking in on us every day. Auntie Anne and Uncle Paul for their enduring support. We were only able to keep mom comfortable at home because of the caring and professional extramural team from the hospital who visited and supported us every day. Thank you so much. 
and of course the team at Flew Ellings and St. James United Church who facilitated the visitation yesterday and the service today. Thank you. Before we close, we'd like to express our overwhelming appreciation for the outpouring of love, thoughts, and prayers for Mum over the past several weeks. Phone calls and cards, food and flowers, messages and more. It was truly a blessing for Mum and us to receive all these gifts of love and compassion and to know how much she was thought of. Jolene was known to always have a smile on her face and be a warm and welcoming and generous presence to all those she encountered. She'll be greatly missed, but will live on in the hearts of all who knew her. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, because you are God. Thank you for the life of your daughter that you entrusted to us. Thank you for our service, for a lifetime. As we hope on the pages of your word, we pray that you will speak to us. Comfort us in your word. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome everyone here this afternoon, and I want to say thank you for being here. Today is a day to honor the life and contributions of Julian Mary Hill. We gather to say goodbye to one taken from our midst. As we gather today, we come as children, family, friends, church, colleagues, and well wishers. We are all affected differently by her death and the passing of Jolene. With a varied experience and interest, I'm quite sure that Jolene left an impact on different people in different ways. She left an impression on her children. We have heard from Marissa and Brennan. So many people share with me some of their experience with her. Some are friends, told me that she was dedicated and reliable. On my home part, as, a, as Jolene's pastor, I know that if you want your job to be done, give it to Jolene. She will do it accurately, precisely, and in fact, more than what you expected. She's reliable in every sense as a member and during all the festive period, Jolene was the first person that I always received a gift from her. I remember that I was told that Jolene served in the committees of ministry and personnel and she was a member of the session that looked after the worship of this church, a member of United Church Women, and one of our friends that they served together at the school board told me of her experience driving with Jolene to some meetings. We have so many stories to, to tell. However, 
a zest for life and willingness to offer a helping hand to any who needed it would continue to impart our children, family, friends, church, as well as those she helped along the way. Julie will be remembered to be somebody that you can talk to and a go-to person for her love and for having a big heart. With all those different memories, we all grief. Yet, there's a grace that is sufficient for every need. There's the opportunity for a peace to take us during this grieving process. Psalm 23, that we read this afternoon, wrote of confidence in the face of death. That psalm speaks of good shepherding. The psalmist through the uncertainties of life. He spoke of God meeting every one of us at our need. David spoke of God meeting him at his own point of need, of anointing him with oil, of preparing food even in the face of enemies who surrounded him, of leading him in safety amidst death and destruction. He wrote of God's presence, goodness, and mercy following him throughout the many experiences of life, providing hope even when all seems lost. He wrote of the confidence of dwelling in God's presence and in God's house forever. Is this not our story today? We can rejoice that today Jolene's suffering came to an end. We can rejoice that she was released from pain and illness it is in that mixture of grief and joy that we begin to suture our lives back together as we bid our goodbyes to a woman who impacted many people in various ways. Today, I can see various sets of people sitting here. We can see various flowers, different flowers, different arenas, various people talk to me, and various motions of life today. Today, we honor the life and impact of Jolene Mary Cavill Hill. We tell the stories of the life she lived before us, and we begin the long, hard process of making sense of our lives in a half sense. We can allow her life and her example to encourage us, rising to the challenge of facing life with the same zeal Jolene demonstrated Will every one of us today rise to the challenge to which she called us to confidently live life to the fullest, loving others along the way? May the Lord grant her eternal rest as we bid her goodbye. May every good deeds that we have encountered in our life speak for her. And I want to encourage the children to please follow the cue of your mom. May you continue to walk in the footstep of God. May you never depart from faith. Your mother served Jesus to the end of her life. She was the, the is it the head of her? Yeah, she was nominated and she was ready to do the work of ushering. In fact, I spoke with her and she told me, don't worry, my man. Everything will be done. Yeah, but alas. I knew her personally. We have so many encounters. And today, I'm not preaching about somebody I never met or somebody I never know. I knew her. So please. I pray that the Lord will comfort you, comfort the family, and comfort everyone, everyone here today. What I want us to take home is that the psalmist said, even though I walk through the shadow of death, why the shadow? Why walking? Why will God not prevent us from walking in the shadow? But there is no how, no way we can do there will always be a shadow. 
there will always be a death. We can only care. When death comes, there's nothing we can do. And I had a first-hand experience of how you took care of her. You stood by her. You did everything for her. In fact, I was amazed because I'm seeing you as very young, full of energy, busy, but despite all your busyness, you put everything aside to take care of her. I was very, very challenged. May the Lord take care of you, give you everything that you desire in your life, make his purpose to come to pass in your life, and give you peace all around you. That is my prayer for you today and through, throughout your lifetime. To the friends, family, the church that are here today, the presence, the goodness, and the mercy of God will follow us. Let us have hope that this is not our final hand, but it is a step to another place, a place where there is no pain, where there is no sickness, where there is no sadness. Today, we are sad, but she's looking at us, and she's telling us, do not be sad. I'm at my father's hand. A day is coming when every one of us, we are going to see her. She's going to see us. She will say, ah, Reverend Radekule, you are here. <laughs> she will welcome me. She's going to welcome every one of us. A day is coming. So I want us to take that home as a job. That it is not the final. A day is coming when we are going to see her. And because of that, I want to challenge every one of us here today. Let us check our relationship with Jesus, the Lord of Jolene's life. Let us pray. We thank you for the life that Jolene has lived with us. We thank you for so many impact that she had. We thank you for her services, for her sacrifices, for her selfless endeavors. We give you praise. Lord, today, I pray for our children, all our families, the church, and everyone here today, that, Lord, you will comfort us, even as we grieve. May we see life after death, and may we see Jesus in everything that we do and say. And may we be a source of comfort to this family throughout this grieving period. Give them the grace to be strong in you. In Jesus Christ's name we we'll pray. Amen. And please, with that, let us take the prayers together. Let us pause in for a minute. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the blessings of life, for watching over us and dead, and for all the ways in which we come to know your love. Grant that when our time on earth is ended, we may be united with all the saints in the joys of your eternal home. Amen. Dear Jesus, in your resurrection, you have given us new hope. Help us to know that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and in the comfort of your spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, we pray for Jolene's children, Marissa and Brennan, grandchildren, great-grandchildren on the way, family and friends, and all for all who grieve this loss. May they know the comfort of your love through the support of others and the peace of your presence. 
and help us all as we seek to offer support and care, healing and hope to those who feel this loss. Amen. And please let us take the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us all our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and honor forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of the family of Julian, we want to say thank you to everyone here today. We are so much touched by your love and by your presence, by your gift, by all these flowers, by your call, and with all your support. We are indeed grateful. We pray that the Lord will grant you Johnny mercies back to everywhere you come to grace to these celebrations. Thank you, and God bless you. And please, as we be leaving the church, please will, after the final song, the closing prayers, and the sending forth, please the minister will lead, followed by the poor bearers, and the casket, the children will follow the casket, and please let us stand up and uh, allow the children to go out first before every one of us will follow them. I will be passing through this main door at the back of, the, of this door. But if you have any mobility issue, please, you can pass through the door by my right hand. The ushers will be there to direct us. Thank you. And I want to thank Amy Henderson for choosing to play t tonight. She, she's busy. And my Reverend, Reverend Julie. Oh, my God. Thank you, Evelyn. She said she will come. So many people are watching us today. Thank you. Oh, my God. I have Jeanette Clark on the console and all the hushers. Thank you very much. And everyone, we are indeed grateful. Let me invite uh, Amy and Reverend Julie for the last aim, Spirit of Gentleness. This is also one of uh, Julie's special aim. She loved this aim, and I know this aim is going to minister to every one of us. through the 
Please, church, let us stand up. In, into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jolene. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your home fold, a lamb of your home flock, and a daughter of your own redeeming. Receive her into everlasting arms, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace of Christ. Amen.